Welcome to the Science Museum in London and to this private tour of Cosmonauts, Birth of the Space Age. In the opening section of the exhibition, I am joined by Sasha Smenova, one of the curators of the exhibition. We're going to look at the beginning of the Russian space program. Well, we're at the start of the Cosmonaut Exhibition, and I'm with Sasha Smenova, uh, a Russian colleague of mine, and also part of the curatorial team. And I want to ask you about this very surprising start to the exhibition, because people might think it's an exhibition about science or about art, but here we have this extraordinary contrast between a Russian rocket from the 1950s and an oil painting from the 1920s. What are you trying to say here? Russian fascination with space long predates the launch of Sputnik in the 1957. And what we are doing here is going back um, half a century before that to look at the cultural roots of that fascination. And that's why we are starting with this wonderful painting by Konstantin Yon, um, dating from 1921, uh, which was conceived as a, as a um, stage curtain for a Bolshoi theatre production. And what the artist is doing here, he's looking at the Russian Revolution of 1917 as a event on a cosmic scale and his thinking behind it is whether the earthly revolution, the Bolshevik revolution, can become a cosmic one on a universal scale. So are you saying that in some ways thinking about space and the cosmos was like a secular religion after the revolution because you couldn't believe in the Tsar, couldn't believe in God, but you could believe in some new hope for the future? It certainly was, um, and also artists, for the first time, they are not only trying to depict the world, but they're trying to transform the world. And towering above this wonderful painting is the rocket engine from the 50s, which is another manifestation of the same idea, but uh, on a more scientific scale, developed by, by uh, Valentin Glushko and his team in the 50s in, in the design bureau, which is amazingly still in use today. So these ideas live on in art as well as in science. So the legacy from that thinking, artistic thinking, uh, is, is very significant. But let, but let me go back, um, because every movement and every thought and ideology has to start somewhere. And to the extent that there is a father of the movement, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky is uh, like a forefather of, of Russian cosmonautics. He was the first person who developed a viable proposal for, for rocket travel, but he was also um, a follower of so-called uh, Russian cosmism movement, which uh, takes its root in, in, in the um, mid-19th uh, century. There's a very touching, a very poignant object in the exhibition which delights visitors which is his hearing aid. Yeah, Selkovsky had scarlet fever age 10, that's why he partly um, lost his hearing. Um, and he developed for himself those wonderful hearing tubes, which were getting progressively bigger in the course of his life. Let's look at some of the artistic ideas that are inspired by Selkovsky. Well, we could spend many hours talking about the extraordinary Russian art of the first part of the 20th century. So let's try and be disciplined and just talk about one. And this remarkable illustration here in pencil and charcoal. Two obvious questions, who is it by and what is it? We are now standing in front of a lovely work by a young architect, Georgi Krutikov, dating from 1928, which is his diploma project. He was a student um, at Khutemas Architecture School in Moscow, um, and he was also exploring these ideas of space travel. What he thought is that we should leave um, Earth for travel, tourism, and work, but we shall all be living in those wonderful flying cities in space. So we shall all be moving into space, traveling in those wonderful transportation cabins, and living worth just for practical things. Well, we've moved to a different scale now. We've moved from that 
beautiful but discreet artistic uh, drawing from the 1920s to this simply epic painting of the great Sergei Korolev. And it is a very remarkable image, isn't it, showing uh, the man in all his glory. Uh, this enormous picture uh, that you imagine would be on display somewhere in Russia, in fact, was not, was it? It wasn't. Um, and when you think that even chief designer's name was not known up until his death in 1966, which is for, for three decades while he was working on the space program, it, it comes as an absolute shock. So in the 1930s, he was a brilliant young engineer, uh, founder of a rocket club, looking at wonderful innovations. And then something pretty dreadful happens in 1938. Yes, so he's arrested in the summer of 1938 um, and more or less the next six years he's grounded in all those inhuman conditions of, of gulag camps then uh, working in uh, Sharashka's or research laboratories, prison laboratories in Kazan and in Moscow until 1944 and he's not fully rehabilitated until late in the 50s. So the work he starts is, is done in, in those inhuman conditions of imprisonment, of destitution. And there's one object, isn't there, in the exhibition that speaks volumes about that extraordinary episode in his life. It's a small metal uh, mug, which is the only possession he, he brought from, uh, from Siberia, from, from Kolyma camp, uh, with, with his name scratched on the bottom of it. And it's exactly this human story behind um, and a very touching episode in his life, uh, which we're alluding to. And then in 1946, there's a very important moment in the history of Russia and also the space program. And there's a truly amazing document in this exhibition. I still cannot believe we've got it actually because again it has never been seen before. It has been declassified more or less specifically for the exhibition. Signed by Stalin personally on both pages um, with, the, with a blue pencil. Uh, Stalin never signed with a pen, always with a pencil, either blue or red one, um, which sets the um, rocket industry in the Soviet Union and designates the responsibilities among uh, various committees. I've had comments from so many historians who've come to the exhibition who first of all are amazed it's an original document when they realise it's done in signature. They are quite astonished. I mean, what an incredibly uh, generous loan from the Russian authorities. And it's pretty extraordinary that it's only in 1946 that the state is actually providing support to all those uh, short-lived societies and space enthusiasts and, and that's where this push um, actually happens um, and the Sputnik is launched more or less a decade after. And I thank you for being my guide in, in this first part of the exhibition and for telling us a bit more not only about the science but also Russian thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.